I want a first pass reaction. It's the start of a new year. What's your soul doing with that? I can already feel the pressure. Like go, I don't, I don't know. 2023 has been a crazy year. What's 2024 gonna look like? I tell you what my soul's doing. I'm not ready. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the January 1st, 2024 podcast. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are in the studio, but not on the first recording this because yeah. obviously we needed to get this done a little bit ahead of time. But Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back. Alex, Alan in the studio this week. Welcome, guys. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, good to see you. Going to do a little two-part series on entering into your year <laughs> with, with some grace and some focus and some plans, right? Some yeah. preparation into your year. But before we do that, explanation of the Christmas lights, Alan? Why yeah, not? well, it's definitely after Christmas when this airs, but we decided to keep it up because of Advent right. and mm -hmm. the reminder that Christmas tide isn't over until right. January 6th. And with, this is a January 1st podcast, so we wanted to leave it up as a visual reminder of where we are in the season. Right. The 12 days of Christmas, we are now in what is called Christmas tide. And I know, I know, everybody is, I mean, they're already <laughs> off to the next Gone, yep. just gone. But, but in the history of the church, there was some wisdom to not blasting. And it goes up through the Feast of Epiphany on January 6th. So you can Google that if that's a new thought to you. Let's start with our pause. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, here at the beginning of a new year, here in the first week of 2024, I do need to pause. I do need to reset and give everyone and everything to you. Absolutely. So would you help me, Spirit of God, would you help me just take a moment right now and release everything about the week and everything clamoring for my soul's attention. I'm just going to set it down for a few moments to be with you here. Take a few moments to do that, friends. Just release everything and everyone to Jesus. And the reason that we do this, Lord, is so that we can have you, so that our souls can come home to you, we can come back to our life in you, our union with you. Restore our union. Restore my union with you. And meet me here in this week's podcast. We all pray together. Amen. Well, guys, good to see you here in starting out the new year, you're probably wondering, dude, what's going on with your face, man? <laughs> Looks like a pretty big bear we'll Tell fight. us about the knife fight. <laughs> yeah. You should see the other guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, what was I going to do? Like put a bandage over it or, yeah. you know, put some of Stacy's makeup. I just like, okay, put it out there. I wish I had a great story. What I want to say is we were spear fishing over Christmas and I got attacked by a shark yeah. And we ate him for dinner. <laughs> That'd be sweet. That would yeah. be impressive. That would be good. Or at least like a mountain biking accident or mm -hmm. something like that. But this is my dermatologist going a little bit crazy here. I have spent a lifetime in the sun. Yeah. I mean, just a lifetime. And back in the days before sunblock and all that was really a thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, yep, just precautionary, all is well, but He's a very careful guy and some things needed to get removed. Cut out. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looks cool. I think you ought to keep it. Yeah. It's kind of my yeah. brave heart look. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> okay. Before we jump into what we want to do this week and next, I want a first pass reaction. You are entering 2024. It's the start of a new year. It's, you know, the week of January 1st. What it, What is... What's your reaction to that? What's your soul doing with that? 
my soul is looking to 2024 to be far better than 2023. Like I, I can already feel the pressure that I am putting on the new year to be better. Hmm. 2023 was just a super hard year for me on many fronts. Mm. I had a, a dog after 15 years that passed away and, and went through many months um, before then where it was rough. My mom, uh, we just had to move from across the country here to Colorado to a retirement community. And and that was a really rough, um, hard, emotional move for her and me as her mm. son mm. to take the lead in that with my sister. And so there were many things about the last year that I felt like I I did well, but it was just so draining. Yeah. And and so um hard that I'm really feeling the pressure for 2024 to not be equal or similar to that. Yeah. And that's a lot mm. of pressure to put on a new year, but that's that's what I'm feeling. Mm. Understandable. I I think I have two divided reactions within me. Um the the first reaction feels a little bit like go. I don't I don't know. Like um I think just the unknown of what's this year gonna hold, what's you know it's been a 2023 has been a crazy year just in so many respects and in the world. And so going, man, what's 2024 gonna look like? I feel that in me. I think at the same time though I feel a lot of optimism for 2024. Mm. Uh, 2023 was also, I feel like a a very anchoring year in my life with God. I, I feel in in a really good place. Ooh, we want to hear. We want to hear more about that later. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and and just my life with Him. And so, I think there's also just a lot of curiosity in me for 2024. What are you up to, God? Where are we going next? What's, what are you, what are you doing in me and my family and my friends and my work? Um, and so I'm curious, like, yeah. and, and excited, like, excited to see what He's yeah. up to because I know it's, I know it's good. I know it's worthwhile. So those are yeah the competing reactions yeah, within yeah. my heart. Yeah, get it. So yeah, yeah. how right about on. you, John? Right on. Um, I'm not ready. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah. I tell you what my soul's doing with it is I'm not ready. Huh. And, and this is a, this is a really helpful thing to name is that your seasons with God and even obviously seasons in life don't necessarily line up with the, right. with the calendar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to talk about inquiring into God about the new year and bring it in into alignment with him and stuff, but I'm not ready. And, and so I'm actually going to give my soul some space mm-hmm. to not like throw a switch and mm-hmm. say, okay, brand new year, brand new me, you know, all yeah. that. Right. Right. Like I'm, I'm not there. And I don't like the pace of things. Mm-hmm. I really don't like the pace of things. I'm fighting hard. Yes. Against, we, I mean, all through the holidays, Stace and I kept trying to get together with people or just schedule a Zoom call or something. Everyone was too busy. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, I am. Um, I'm going to need to hear from God about this year. Yeah. Which is what this, what this podcast in next weeks is about. So we can jump into that. Here's what we're going to do this week and next. It's kind of a two-part entering into your year. We, we always do this. We have the annual first of the year podcast on consecrating your year, dedicating it, bringing it into God's care, getting it out of the crazy and into him and yep. into his love. Mm-hmm. We call it consecrating it. It means dedicating it, bringing it in, making it his, like with some intentionality. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then part two, next week, we want to talk about like taking up the practices that help us just live well as human beings and have a life in God. And so that's going to be really rich. I'm looking forward to that one as well. But before we get there, we need to explain the why a little bit. So 
when Jesus says in John 15, he says, remain in me and I will remain in you. Mm -hmm. Like there's a life to be had that is in the care, covering, protection of God. Right. And then there's a whole lot of life that's just sort of spinning around out there way outside of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And just because you believe in God doesn't necessarily mean that a particular trip, vacation plan, you know, calendar is in him, mm -hmm. right? The pull, the riptide is for everything to just get sucked in by the world's way of doing things and into the chaos. And yeah. So can you recall taking on something that wasn't what he was part of? Want me to go? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'll go to this last year because that's the most present experience, right? Yeah. Um, so um, I'll talk a little bit later about what my year, what I sensed from God my year was supposed to be about. Oh, right on. And that'll tie into this story. Okay. <laughs> but um, so uh, a couple buddies and I, uh, ski buddies that go do these hut trips, um, decided, man, wouldn't it be fun if we took our wives on a hut trip, <laughs> backcountry skiing? Uh, because yeah. Yeah. How fun Like we have so be? much fun. <laughs> Why wouldn't they have fun? <laughs> and, um, and, and, the, and we did talk to our wives about it and we did say, Hey, was this something you would be fun for you? Do you think you'd enjoy? And, and all the wives were like, yeah, we want to, we want to do it. We want to get it to try the thing we failed to do is ask Jesus where, like, where should we do this? What, you know, what are you saying, Lord? We just yeah. launched into, oh, you know what? We love that hut that's 2,000 feet up from the parking lot that's six miles in that's, what you know, got, oh you know, gosh. angles that are, you know, you're probably at 18 to 20 degrees at times oh that you're skinning up and... And so we, um, you know, we launched into it and we did it and, uh, and oh my gosh, by the time we got up to the hut, I wasn't sure my marriage was going to survive this hut trip. <laughs> that, you know, I'll let the other guys can speak for their wives, but my, my wife was not a happy camper and, and, uh, she, she was pretty done. Wasn't with. one of them crying before you even got to the hut? Yeah, Mel, Mel, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> she was not happy. Oh, um, and, uh, and so, um, you know, thank, thank God. Like he, he rescued it in the moment. He was kind, there was grace for yeah. it, but it probably would have been wise of us to go, Jesus, is that the hut that you have for this trip? We didn't, we just didn't do it. It was just, we're excited, joy, let's yeah, go do this. Absolutely. Didn't think about it. Yep. Um, and, uh, it's worked great in the past. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, but we, you know, we we recorrected. We had conversation with the wives, and we're like, "Would you do this again? We're not sure we want to do this again. If this is what it's what it's like, well, give us one more chance next year." And so, so we do have a hut trip coming up. We're going to a much shorter <laughs> approach, little little nicer hut. <laughs> um, Yes. 500 not, feet of elevation not quite gain. quite as yeah. much elevation gain. And, uh, and we'll give it, a, give it a try this year. So um, that, that would be an example of something that, man, I, I wish I would have oh, paused totally. with totally. my buddies and said, God, is that the right one to What do you think of this to? plan? Yeah. Yeah. Are you in the plan? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is different than are you in the idea? Yes. He mm. might be in oh, the he idea. He was totally in the idea. And the gals were up for it, but, but it, it was wrong location. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah Especially for first, first timers. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> yep. yep. Alan. Yeah, man. Um, what comes to mind is last year, there were several events that I go on in a year to speak and sometimes it's at conferences and sometimes churches and different venues. And usually I'm pretty good at listening prayer on the front end, but there was one 
in 2023 that seemed so perfectly aligned on all fronts that I skipped that part, not really realizing I skipped it. Just looked at my calendar. Yep, the dates are open. Yep, this seems like a a neat opportunity. And when I go speak, I don't have a wingman. It's just me. And so I don't have a, a kind of a team or another person to pray with or, you know, kind of be in my foxhole. So I go into this event a few months later after I said yes, and it was just a nightmare. Oh, um, no. And it was a nightmare on several fronts. Um, the entire group, it, there was a religious spirit around the whole thing mm. that mm. was opposed to it. I find out that that particular part of the country is a hotbed for witchcraft. Oh, nice. There, Nobody told me mm. that, and I, I didn't Google that ahead of time. I usually <laughs> don't Google hot spots for witchcraft. And I found myself just constantly on the reactive mode um, of operating. I was blindsided by a lot. A lot of the people there were opposed to the message I was bringing, which is about hearing the voice of God and freedom. And, and, and so it was just one of those things where once I was there, I knew I can, yes, I can ask for God's coverage mm, in this yes. and, and, and he's with me, but it wasn't something that I ever got a clear green light on. Mm. And now I've got to just kind of get through it. And, and I did, but it was, it was rough mm. and it was a good lesson learned that, you know, the, again, kind of like your trip, like the, the idea wasn't bad. Yeah. And the message that I was bringing was really good. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily, I think, if I had paused to listen, something God would have said, go do, mm. especially not alone. Mm. Yeah. And so big lesson learned on the back end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alan, I remember you coming back from that that trip and it sounded super intense. And uh, yeah. and, I, and I am curious, like, what, what would have happened if you had asked God? Maybe you still would have told you to go, but maybe he would have given you a better heads up. And, yeah. Uh, been like, man, you need a wing. Take man, a buddy. You, yeah. You know, be ready for this or who, yeah. who knows. But yeah. The right. Point is yeah. to, and to ask. Ask the question. The point is to ask. Yeah. And God is kind and he rescues yeah. and he yeah. intervenes, but you don't want to live a life where you're constantly needing God to rescue you <laughs> yeah, right. because you didn't ask. You yeah. know, the wives are mad yes. and that's blowing up. And even down to like a conversation that you want to have that you know is got some booby traps to it, like mm-hmm. marriage or mm-hmm. kids or something, work, a friend, somebody you need to confront. Oh my gosh. Like I, I wanted to have a conversation with one of my kids mm. and I knew, I knew it was booby trapped. I knew mm. that there were just minds all around it, but I kind of felt like, well, no, like a, a loving dad doesn't let that stuff you know, scare you off of difficult yeah. conversations, you press in, Yeah, right? <laughs> Love presses in. I, I, I did ask and I didn't listen. Mm. Like I mm. had a sense of, yeah, not today. We, we, we were driving somewhere and I knew I was going to get some car time. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Uh-huh. Well, the problem is then they feel trapped in the car for the rest of the time, right? <laughs> yes. It's not like it's over coffee and okay, see you later. You know, think about it. Yes. Like, okay, so we're in the car, we're trapped. And guys, like I did have a sense mm. that I wasn't supposed to bring it up. And I don't know what it was in me that just went, I'm bringing it up man. No, I'm, I'm going for it and bring up a difficult subject, a point of contention. It did not go well. Mm. It did not go well. And, and I just like, dang, man, when it gets into human relationships yeah. and hearts yes. that are involved and that stuff can last a while. Right. Right. So it's not just a bad weekend, mm-hmm. but like it introduced some tension for a while that didn't need to be there. And, and, so, John, looking back at that, you didn't sense a green light from God, but what? But kind of take us through what was your thought process? Like, okay, I asked, I didn't hear yes. 
No, no, no. I, I'm pretty sure I heard no. <laughs> you heard no. Okay. <laughs> I'm admitting this. So you heard no. And then what was your thought process? Well, then it's a couple hours later. We're in the car and it's like the moment is right there. You yeah. know? And I, I think it was, I have been waiting a long time to bring this up. And I think I was confused by my sincerity. Mm. It was love. Mm. It was, I, I really, it does need to be brought up. It does need to be talked about, but that's that thing of, it's not your bad heart that's going to get you to do things you shouldn't do. It's your good heart. Yeah. Dang, man. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just, I didn't want to listen to the counsel. I wanted to do it. Yeah. Mm. And I thought it was the loving thing to do. And it was bad timing and it didn't go well. And, and so the reason we're sharing these stories, gang, is what, what we do at the, st- at the start of every year is we recommend that you consecrate your year to God, that you, you know, and then however you do that, you consecrate your calendar, you dedicate the year, you bring it under his love and his kingdom and his provision. And I, I think especially at this time in the world, the world is a gnarly place. Chaos is everywhere. People's lives are fried. People are running on very, very low margins, and yeah. it's just busy, 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 get to the next thing. Yeah. This practice uh, of wanting to make sure that your new year is in alignment with Jesus mm-hmm. and, and his thoughts for you, his desires to listen to the warnings, to follow the promptings, to, yeah, risk where he's saying risk and pull back where he's saying pull back. That's always been a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's a really vital idea now Mm. in a a culture and in a world and in a climate like we're in right now, including with the level of what we call the spiritual war, the warfare of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. It's just... It's huge right now. And so when we talk about consecrating the year, dedicating it, what what we mean is that we're trying to bring all things into alignment with Jesus for the year. And so how do you guys typically do that? What does that look like for you as you start 2024? For us, it's helpful to make it tactile and not just sitting and praying, but dedicating a time. It doesn't have to be on the first. It can be that week or it can be even, you know, the day before the beginning of the year. But but a specific moment where we don't just sit and pray, but we walk through the house. Mm-hmm. And that's super helpful because it just for me, and I think for Kelly, makes it more real mm-hmm. when we go out to the garage and we put our hands on our vehicles as we're praying for our vehicles. Our hands are on the hood, you know, of that. And we'll go room to room. And put our hands on the doorpost or walk through the room. Um, we pray by name for our children who are now off in college and and out on their own. That the probably wouldn't be in the house at that moment. Yeah. But we're consecrating all of our domain. And as much as we can, we're in the physical location, at least in our home and mm. yard and garage, where those things are. Uh, if we're talking about finances, we may have a hand on our checkbook or wallet or whatever. But that's really been helpful, guys, because it just it makes it more. I like that. Real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just up in the ether, kind of the esoteric. Yeah. Super concrete. Yep. I love that idea, Alan. I I don't do that, <laughs> but I'm gonna think about it this year. Um, my Mel and I typically do that separately. Like that hasn't been a practice we've done together yeah. like, like you and Kelly. Um, but part, part of the practice I've started doing in the last few years, and it's been really helpful before I launch in to consecrating the new year, listening on the new year has been to actually go back to the previous mm. year. Um, and um, it was actually JD that made the recommendation to me. Um of this idea of just pull, pull out your pictures from the last year and walk through the photo album from oh, the wow. last year. And it's just mm. this real visceral way of, Very. of going, 
oh, oh, I forgot about that. Oh my gosh. Yes. God, you did that. Like mm. that was really cool. Or, oh my gosh, that was really hard. Um, and then seeing what happened, like, mm. but it just, it just has been a helpful practice to me. And then, um, kind of marking that previous year and going, okay, you know, I started off that year with some things from God and, and seeing what he mm. did and how he showed mm. up. And I, and I think in some ways that fuels me then for what I enter into mm. for the new year. Um, and so for me, it's, a, it's a, it's a pretty, um, I don't know what the best word to describe it is. Um, uh, it's a practice I do alone. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and it'll involve, you know, starting out with, um, it essentially giving everything to God in my world. Kind of like you're talking, Alan, you're laying your hands on your cars and your kids and your yes. rooms of your house and, and your relationship with Kelly and all those things. I'm doing that as well, but it's, yeah, it's more of a intimate practice with God yeah. and, uh, giving them all those things, consecrating those things to God and into the new year yeah. um, and what he has in store. So, yeah. Um, and then I'll enter into some practice of, of just sitting and listening. Okay. What do you have then yep. God for this year? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's really good. That's kind of like a part two yep. on that. Yep. Some dedication, some alignment. Yeah. And it's in it's submission. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right. I am submitting the year right. to you, God, to, to you, Lord Jesus, to guide, direct, protect, provision mm -hmm. comes through submission first, right? Yeah. To get it into alignment. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Stacey and I do the same. We do both. We do it individually. She'll stay up. She, you know, she'll be up on um on New Year's Eve. She'll stay up often and worship into the new year. And it's just kind of her way of saying this entire year is completely given to Jesus and, and what he's doing. And we have a beautiful phrase that we begin to use a lot in our house and we begin to use it a lot in our conversations here at Wild at Heart. Only you and what you're doing. Only you, God. Only you and what you're doing. I just don't want to chase things or say yes to things, right. or, or take on things, or do things that you're not in, that only you and what you're doing would be a good way to consecrate a year. As you say, okay, Lord, our vacations this year, hmm. only you and what you're doing. The kids' education, only you and what you're doing, right? And yeah. on into that. Um hmm. And we'll do it separately. Stacey and I'll do it individually. And then we'll come together primarily around the calendar. We found it really, and this is where we get tactile. Yeah. We get the calendar out mm. and we get, you know, we have one of those big wall calendars on the inside of the pantry door just so we can kind of look at it and go, oh, holy cow, we are way over committed. Mm. You know, every yes by itself. Yes. <laughs> Seems reasonable, but when you start stacking <laughs> up all your yeses and you go, oh, we are way over committed. So we'll stand before the calendar in the kitchen and just go, no, Lord, only you and what you're doing. We dedicate January. We'll put our hands on it. We'll dedicate yeah. February. Wow. Right. And we'll go yes. through each month of the year um, because we really, we are earnestly wanting to bring all things into the protection of the kingdom of God and into, yeah, his counsel, his guidance, his joy, hmm. his provision. Yeah. So we'll do that very, very tactile uh, mm. through through the months together. And that, that feels good. That does. And, and the whole way of consecrating to me, seeing it as a release first, yeah. meaning, you know, we've all kind of hit on this, but mm. everything that we're consecrating, we're releasing yeah. to God, knowing he can give it back. Mm. Or we can let it go mm. for good. And so there's a lot of, for us, freedom in that going, it's really not ours anyway. It is, we're the stewards of it, but our calendar, our finances, whatever plans we have, 
we're not only consecrating it, but God, we're giving it to you. And now you can give it back or you can show us you want to change it. But it's we're not going to go into the new year with hard assumptions that it has to go a certain way on any front. And that's hard to hold on to, but but we can do it during consecration. It's just so beautiful because the things that are going on in your soul while you're doing this mm-hmm. are, are really, really good. Yeah. Right. The yieldedness, the mm-hmm. trust, mm-hmm. the hope, like yeah. everything into him. Yes. Yeah. yeah and I think that's uh, for me, you're saying, Alan, the, the piece of um, everything being um, released to him. And, and for me, I think that piece of everything back in to him, right. Where yeah. it just feels like, you go through a whole year and you don't necessarily know where any one thing has kind of wandered off to in your life. Mm, yeah, you and, don't. And so um, I, for me, it's, it is a really helpful practice to have the beginning of the year. And like you said, John, it, it, there's nothing necessarily magic to the beginning of the year, but it is a, it's a, mar- it's a marker. Yep that we can use to go, okay, here's, here's my opportunity mm. to bring everything back mm. into God mm. um, and, and start out knowing that I've, I've thought through those things and brought them mm. into Jesus, into his kingdom as I begin out this year. Yeah. So. Okay. I have a confession that's going to help explain why this is really important. So. We are living in a time of great global instability. And wherever you want to look, the universities are changing, education's changing, AI is changing things, work is changing, global economies look unstable, right? And, and then the tragedy and the heartbreak and the wars. And it, it, is, it is a time of massive social instability. And in some of the bedrock things that used to provide, like um, provide the soul a safe haven, mm. feel very unstable for people these days, whether it's home and family life or work, um, but particularly community. Fragmentation is the order of the day, even down to the human body and, and mental health. Okay, so we just need to name that of why this is so important hmm. because I, I just want to run away. <laughs> this is my confession. I just want to run away. You guys, over the holidays, the number of plans that I just started entertaining in my heart, like down to, hey, babe, it wasn't our year to have Christmas with the kids. Uh, it was the in-law year. We're on that cycle. I'm like, Let's let's go to London for Christmas. Let's just catch a flight and just do something, something, you know. And but then it just it just like or let's do this or let's do this or let's do this or why can't we be there? And my heart was really, whoa, looking for something. I want to run away. Yeah. And what would you name? What were you looking for? If you could put a word to wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm looking for a little empathy here. Is that <laughs> Anybody else? Any, any, anyone? Anyone no had the about, runaway John. thing? <clears throat> I'm totally good with God right yeah. where we are. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So happy and settled. Peaceful. Yeah. No, John, I think that's like, I think that's pretty universal right yeah. now in people's hearts. It's yeah. like- You be, think so? Yeah. Like people are looking for the thing that feels like- not complicated, right? Yeah. Like mm. I have, the, I have those feelings too. Right? I want to go. I want to run away to Hawaii. Right. I want to sit on the beach. Yes. Like the waves are pretty predictable. Right. The <gasps> seventy degrees is pretty predictable. Yeah. yeah. Like the the world does feel very chaotic, very fragmented, and and that's that's the temptation, right? It's like just give me rest, give me predictability and peace. Okay, so you, you you're connecting with this, yeah, yeah, and then the heart will start making plans, yeah, and then the soul will start ordering things of no, we are going, we are, or I'm not saying yes to that, or you know, yeah, 
I'm not going to commit to that small group again. I'm overwhelmed when actually that Mm. may be your safe haven. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. I want to run away. (laughs) That is in the way uh, of this practice. It's the very reason I need to do it is actually, Mm. God, as much as I do want to run away, I don't only you and what you're doing. I just learned from too many mistakes, too many blown up vacations, too many bad career decisions to, you know, just, if he's not in it, Mm -hmm. it ain't good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's this practice. (laughs) And I tell you what made it so much harder was that I had friends who did fly overseas for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, see, they're doing it. Yeah. Come on. (laughs) Look at the pictures. They're having a great time. (laughs) Killing me. Killing me. And they actually were running away. Yeah. Right. And like, I know what you're doing and it looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> but I also know the end of it isn't like, I just know that. I, the life without God, the conversation, the trip, mm. you know, the adventure without God, whatever it is, yeah. man, it, it is not good. And the running away, as you're saying that, and you're talking about the beach and you're talking about maybe London, right? Yeah. Like, one side of it is fill the time with distraction. Go somewhere where there's a lot of Absolutely. other things. Absolutely. Or fill it with get away from everything and like this deserted island where there is no phone. There aren't a lot of people. It's And I feel that tug. Like I feel the tug of yeah. I just want everything to stop. I yes. want all the, all the distractions, all the yes. noise, all the interruptions. And either way, we are, I mean, we're setting ourselves up for a false Mm -hmm. relief because not only is that trip maybe not going to happen, but the relief isn't going to come through that. Yeah. And it's worse than that. We're setting ourselves up for heartbreak. Yeah. Right. Because those things can really go sideways, like the conversation I had, like the trip you had, like these things can, you know, Mm -hmm. adventures go sideways, money, finances, career, like things can really go sideways pretty quick when it is outside of God and his provision and his love and care and guidance. So I want to go to guidance here before we land the show, this part one. Um, So you were saying that after you kind of go through, Lord, I dedicate my relationship with Mel, I dedicate my work, mm-hmm. I dedicate, you know, kind of go through your life. Yeah. And then you go through a practice of listening. Yeah. And it's, and that part for me, what I'm looking for at the, at the beginning of the year is, okay, God, t- tell me about this year. What, what do I need to mm. be essentially heads up to? Mm this year and is it a word is it a thought is it a phrase what you know i'm o- i'm open to what god wants to share and it's and it's typically most of the time it's been something very specific mm. and and kind of one thing mm. for the year for for me to pay attention to be aware of um and um do you want me to share for example, what this year's was. yeah, yeah. What was yeah. last year's? What yeah, was twenty three? Because it ties into what I did with my wife, um, which I should have I should have learned because I knew this going in. Um, so, as a beginning of twenty twenty three, praying, asking God, "What's this year about?" and and He said, "It's her turn," meaning it's Mel's turn. Wow! And I was like, "Huh? Hmm. What's that mean?" <laughs> like hmm. her turn for what? <laughs> like, but the, you know, there wasn't. God wasn't revealing necessarily a lot. I had some hunches, like, you know, what, what, what do you mean mm. her turn? Um, but it, but it was something to kind of anchor my year and go, okay, this year, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna kind of pay attention to and see how you work in that God. So, um, you know, I think out of, out of my good, out of my good heart, of course. You know, part of that was that ski trip and going, mm. you know, would, would love to give her a turn. I do all these hut trips with my buddies and the wives are usually not invited on those. And so, and, and those 
other guys wanted that too. And, mm. and so it, it felt like in alignment with something mm. God was doing, we just didn't ask the question mm. where, <laughs> Yeah, when, where, um, but man, looking back on this year, I, I had no idea how much that would be true. And, um, and it's been true in ways of just supporting Mel's kind of gone through a year of she's got some new desires on her heart, some things she wants to pursue. And so paying attention to that and, and, and being willing to go, okay, let's, let's figure out how to help, help you do that. So, um, you know, most, most recently she, she has some desires to do some, some podcasting of her own. And so we went and bought her, bought her mics. Come on. Set up a little studio in her office and she's starting to play around with that and helping her learn how to use the software to, to do that herself. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I would have, I would have been as responsive and thoughtful there it is to go that, you know, yeah, let's do that, babe. Um, might've missed it. Um, had God not given me that heads up yeah. and then to some deeper things where like Mel and I's relationship, there were some things I needed to look at in terms of how I've, how I've impacted her mm. and she was brave and she, she confronted me on that mm. this, um, in this last year. And, and so for her to do that and then having that word of it's her turn mm. was to go, okay, like God, I'm, I'm, I'm yours. I want to listen. I want to hear this. Um, and I, and so again, I think I was more attentive to receive it because that was the word over the year. And, and so looking as at the year as a whole, it's just like, wow, God, thank you. That was a rescue yeah. to know that that's what this year held. So, um, I'm, I'm, and that motivates me now. Like I, I want to know, okay, God, what's, yeah. what are you saying in 2024? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's the other part of what we're recommending is that our friends listening, dedicate the year, bring all things under the jurisdiction of Jesus. Yeah. Your finances, your plans, your calendar, your relationships, everything. Bring it all under Mm -hmm. um, so that it can get into alignment with him. Yes. And then that second step of listening for words or a scripture he has for you over the years. There are themes. There's something Mm -hmm. you're saying over the year, Jesus. And, And the one that he gave me over 2023 has kind of partly made sense, but I'm actually still puzzling over part of it. And that's where I think about the bleed over. Yes. It, it actually may be a little bit more of like a seasonal mm-hmm. thing that he spoke to me rather than, okay, so by, you know, the end of yes. December 2023, <laughs> you're going to see all that fall into line. It didn't. It yeah. didn't. I'm still partially, but that word still means a lot to me. So I'll, I'll tell yeah. you all what it was when when the fullness of that comes and and don't worry, babe. It's still your turn. <laughs> like just because we're going into twenty four. Oh, good catch. Yeah. Okay. So part one, <laughs> part two next week. We want to pick up kind of like okay. So how do we live well going into the new year? If we do want to grab a reset, what might that what might that look like?